my case study was being given as a case of gout this was a case study being uh, given to me 30 year male with bmi 32 kg per meter square his chief complaints was gout dyslipidemia poor energy obesity lifestyle se lifestyle was sedentary lifestyle he's an it professional uh, with a mixed diet alcohol three times a week and poor sleep habits and his uh, biochemistry was uric acid 9 mg per deciliter b1200 nanogram per deciliter this lipidemia was there triglycerides were 300 mg per dl and cholesterol was somewhere borderline 200 mg per dl uh, i have uh, modified this as height and weight was not being mentioned i took my own height and weight which came which gave the bmi of 32 kg per meter square and somewhere he's found to be around with Broca's index, his ideal body weight is 62 kgs and around 22 kgs, 24 kgs overweight. So I have divided this uh, entire condition in, for, in two plans. Uh, plan type A goes as a mixed plan being an IT professional. If he has to uh, eat somewhere outside in his own uh, uh, professional life and also a traditional plan where he can... Uh, have his regular meals at home. So in plan type A, I have taken to in, start with 25 kilocalories per kg uh, ideal body weight, which, uh, which comes up to around 1550 kilocalories. I have taken 60% as carbohydrates, 233, which uh, comes as 232 grams per day. Proteins around 15%, which comes up to 58 grams per day. And fat, uh, 25% which comes to around 43 grams per day. Now, I've tried to give a very uh, antioxidant rich diet. Post waking up, he's supposed to have a half teaspoon of amla powder with warm water. As we all know, amla is a very good source of vitamin C and uh, its role in uh, gout as well as uh, in dyslipidemia is very high. So it will basically help in cleansing effect as an antioxidant. Then early morning, I have given him tea, but not a regular tea. It will be detox tea, which will have uh, lemongrass, ajwain, cinnamon, and snuff in half teaspoon each quantity boiled in water with one teaspoon of soaked methi seeds. I'll let you know the benefits later. Madhvi, if you can expand your screen a bit. Uh, is it okay, ma'am, now? Some more. Or you can put one page at a time. 100% um, you put. Okay. Uh -huh, ma'am. Ma'am, you have an option of doing it at your end. You can see that. Is it? Percent on the top of the screen, and I can see that, so I could just zoom it up. I don't know. Achha, okay, 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 fine, fine. Yeah. Thank you, okay. thank you, Geeta. I could do it. Then, breakfast, I have given him fruit bowl with apple, pear, and pineapple around 200 grams, so it is quite filling for him before he leaves for his office. And these are uh, low purine fruits. Then, in mid morning, around 11 o'clock, I have given him nuts like walnuts, almond, and mixed seeds. Mixed seeds will be basically pumpkin, sunflower, and flax seeds. And um, because they don't have so much of time to go and eat something that can be very handy and he, they can uh, eat from where they are working. So as we all know, the, these seeds are rich in omega-3, vitamin E, minerals, and antioxidants. Now lunch, this menu is kind of a mixture of continental and a kind of traditional diet. Uh, rice pulao is there, which is two cups, but vegetables, carrot, French beans. Because anywhere, even in the outside canteen where pulao is available, carrots and French beans are always there. And uh, with the uh, folate, like as last time we discussed about uh, French beans juice rich in folate, I have included this uh, recipe with a uh, raw salad with olive oil dressing. Then that is around 200 grams with five one teaspoon of uh, olive oil. Then dal, two cups. 
because if he's eating outside dal, we don't know the consistency. So I've kept at least two, two cups and vegetable in that. I presume the vegetable should be half cup. If he is taking from home, well and good. Then buttermilk, a very thin buttermilk I have given him with one teaspoon curd as a probiotic. Then snacks at 4 p.m. is again tea, which is a detox tea. Lemon tea with dates, around 25 grams of dates I have given him. So that he does not crave or more cravings are not there for food. It's, as we all know, dates is rich in fibers, minerals, beta carotene. I've included this in his diet. Then in mid evening at 5 p.m., I have given him apple as well as egg whites. One small apple is there with one egg whites. And both being low purine, apple rich in soluble fiber and egg as a first class protein I have given him. Post mid evening, he can go to his exercise schedule and post exercise schedule, I have given, given him one uh, 200 ml, that's one carton of soya milk. Even if he's not at home or outside also, anywhere he can have it immediately. Even soya milk is having, a, is a low purine source. It's just having 12 milligram of uh, urine per 100 grams. Then in dinner, I have given him oats, wedge, paratha. That's one small. Oats should be taken into 50 grams with mixed with half cup of vegetables and patted upon to make paratha as a source of soluble fiber, which will help him in his dyslipidemia. Then pulses as a source of protein. I have given sprouts usil because it's already pre-digested and rich source and also it will be filling for him instead of giving him uh, dal. Then again, buttermilk made out of one teaspoon of curd with the oats paratha. I have given him garlic and flaxseed chutney. Garlic uh, bean hypocholesterolemic and the flaxseed rich in omega-3. Salads or soup he can have, whichever as per his convenience. I have given him 200 grams of uh, vegetables to be used as salad or with as soup with one teaspoon of olive oil. And bedtime, I have given him uh, skim milk. Sorry. Uh, bedtime, I have given him skim milk, that is uh, 150 ml. Because maybe if uh, he's used to eating a lot of food before and suddenly he should not feel that uh, he should not crave. So later on that can be fine tuned as first class proteins. I have given him skim milk. So this entire diet comes to around 210 grams of carbohydrates, 58 grams of protein, 44 grams of fat and around 15, uh, 67 kilocalories. Now this plan type B, uh, same 1550 kilocalories, but around, I've tried to reduce the carbs by 55%. I've tried to increase the protein to 18% and fat around 25%, which comes to 46 grams. So this, this plan is very traditional plan. Try to be making it more of South Indian plan. And uh, very less of outside food like soya milk or maybe if somebody is not used to olive oil, I have excluded that also. So as a source of MUFA, there I had added in previous plan olive oil as well as groundnut oil and source of MUFA was sunflower oil. Here I am adding only groundnut oil because many traditional people may not like the taste and smell of olive oil. So here post waking up, I have added lemon, warm water with lemon. And the same herbs, which there I have asked them to make in a detox tea, I have given them as a powder. If somebody likes to take it in a powdered form, it is more convenient. Then early morning, here I have given tea made out of skim milk, a regular tea I have given him. Lemongrass can be added to a normal regular tea also. Low fat as a skim milk and no sugar. Then as a breakfast, I have given him multi-millet upma. These days we get a rava, multi-millet rava made of uh, jawar, bajra and foxtail millets. So all the millets are grounded roughly and they are made into rava. The taste is also very excellent. And the vegetables are around 25 grams because this is also a low glycemic. These multi-millet rava will be having a low glycemic index. So I have selected this multi-millet rava. Then mid-morning again I have given one big size around 200 grams of apple. Even if he's at home or outside, he can carry it and he can have it. So again, low purine fruit and soluble fiber. Then lunch, I've given him spicy pongal. 
around uh, rice 60 grams and mung dal 30 grams then french beans puriel here in this plan most of the protein has been derived from pulses little more quantity of pulses or dals have included in the diet then french beans puriel french beans around 100 grams it is folate rich 47.45 micrograms per 100 grams then egg whites two number as first class protein source then uh, I have added lemon rasam. Lemon have to be added later on after the rasam and spices are being boiled. Then uh, I have, uh, as a salad, I have given this koshimbir, which is a traditional salad made with cucum chopped cum uh, cucumber and tomatoes. And uh, I have given more of curd here because even instead of sometimes pongal, rice and dal, if he has to have and uh, 30 grams of rice, he can mix it, make it into curd rice, he can shift in that way also. Then for snacks, I have given him chana chaat. He can use for this roasted chana as well as sprouts. So moon sprouts are there around 60 grams. Then uh, pomegranate I have added, which is also a rich source of uh, folate, around 38.64 uh, milligrams per 100 grams. Then skim milk is there as tea and vegetables to be added in chana chaat. In mid evening, there is a fruit, one banana, a small banana is there. Now, depending on the size of banana, like at least 100 grams I have given him. But a small banana, if it is a very small, then elaichi banana, he can have two. Then uh, post-exercise, this is pre-exercise uh, fruit. Then post-exercise, I have given him muligatwani soup. This soup is basically made from masoor dal. And uh, coconut milk is used, but coconut milk will be having a lot of fats in it. I have substituted with almond milk and spices. Spices are same as uh, what we seek, like cumin seeds, fennel seeds, fenugreek seeds, cinnamon, ginger, and garlic, which are all helping in his dyslipidemic conditions. Then uh, dinner, I have given him salad, green salad, uh, besan chila, and curd made out of skim milk. And uh, oil is 30 grams. If you see previous uh, menu, the oil was 20 grams because already we had included olive oil and a lot of nuts were there which were substituting as a fat source. But here very few of them are there because not everybody may go for it. So it is groundnut plus sunflower oil around 30 grams of oil had to be included in this menu. So what are the superfoods used in this menu plan? Lemongrass. Lemongrass is a resource of phytochemicals. It has a lot of pharmacological effects, antimicrobial, antioxidants. Uh, we all know it's already used in Ayurvedic foods. Then oats is a resource of beta-glucan. is an important component of dietary fiber found in oat grains. It is uh, the major active compound in oats with proven cholesterol lowering and anti-diabetic effects. We don't know even he may be having, he may be pre-diabetic or uh, we don't know his glucose uh, levels. So then again, uh, omum is there. It is antifungal, antioxidant, antimicrobial, hypolipidemic, antihypertensive, antispasmodic, bronchodilating, and diuretic. So all even cinnamon is there, which is uh, antimicrobial, blood glucose, and blood pressure, and serum cholesterol lowering with anti-inflammatory, wound healing, hepatoprotective. Fennel seeds are there. Again, walnuts, omega-3 fats, almonds, vitamin E rich. Pumpkin, sunflower, and watermelon are very loaded with antioxidants and minerals. And fenugreek seeds already it's proven for lowering triglycerides and improving uh, blood glucose and lipid levels. So all these spices will definitely help in his um, dyslipidemia. So uh, vitamin C rich foods in the menu is amla and lemon. Now there is a study which I found shows that vitamin C supplementation could be considered as preventive measures as these can lower urate levels as well as the risk of gout and some of its comorbidities. So I've tried to add lemon in rasam, I've tried to add lemon in uh, warm water, amla powder is there and uh, while counseling we can counsel him, counsel him to add lemon as, as much as uh, seasoning he wants in a day. Then uh, classification of purine containing foods as per one of the studies I'll show you. 
uh, they have done the very low group, which is having less than 50 milligram per 100 gram foods. Then the low group, 50 to 50 milligram to 100 milligram per 100 gram foods. Then the moderate group is considered as 100 to 200 milligram per 100 gram. The high group is 200 to 300 milligram per 100 gram. And the very high group is considered more, 100, 300, more than 300 milligram per 100 grams of purine content. So if you see in the menu plan, which we see, which we have seen, eggs and dairy products which have been used are having no purine or less than 13 milligram per 100 gram of purine. Then soya milk is having around 25 milligram per 100 grams of purine. Polished or milled rice is 25 milligram per 100 gram of purine. I thought of giving uh, brown rice as a substitute uh, for uh, polished rice, but then I found that purines in brown rice is quite high. So I consider shifting back to polished or milled rice because anyways, which ways we will give in calculated quantities with a lot of other benefits which we are adding in form of other foods, this should not matter. Then banana again, three milligram per 100 gram. Then uh, uh, vegetables used like cucumber, onion, cabbage, carrot, onion, potatoes are all less than 10 milligram per 100 gram of purine. Then ginger and garlic less than 20 milligram per 100 gram. Low fructose fruits and the fructose. As we have seen last time, fructose, high fructose syrups and fructose is also one of the predisposing factor which will add up to the gout condition. Uh, as far as possible, low fructose fruits have been added. Apple is 8 gram per 100 gram. Banana is 6.32 gram per 100 gram of fructose. Pear is 3.51 grams per 100 grams. And pineapple is very less, 1.21 gram per 100 grams. Now, water intake, we have to orally tell them at least more than 2 liters per day, at least 1 liter per 25 kgs of body weight. So, this is a study which I found, uh, like total purine and purine-based content of common foodstuff for, for facilitating nutritional therapy for gout and hyperuricemia. Very few of them, but uh, this has been very scientifically categorized into all the uh, categories I showed from low to very high purine content of foods. I found it to be very uh, useful in menu planning. Again, it's just lifestyle is what is more important when we uh, target any improvements or any changes the patient has to undergo apart from diet therapy. So considering exercise and physical activity, a very important aspect of management of any patient uh, what the studies have shown that successful weight control, mostly more than 10 kgs weight reduction, was correlated with significant uric acid reduction, which was consistent with the report of Dalbeth et al. That huge weight loss in severe obesity, more than 35 kg per meter square of BMI, cases led to significant serum uric acid reduction, while slight weight loss caused not much of change in serum uric acid levels. Now, European League Against Rheumatism, recommendations for rheumatic and musculoskeletal diseases, they recommended for exercise as uh, like exercise is beneficial for like these days in 2021, they have given this uh, uh, these points to be uh, mentioned. Exercise is beneficial for many health outcomes, including but not limited to RMD symptoms and progression. People with RMD that is rheumatic and musculoskeletal diseases, should exercise because of benefits on pain, function, and quality of life. People with RMD should avoid physical inactivity. They should engage in regular exercise according to their abilities. People with RMD should perform both aerobic and strength ex strengthening exercises, aiming for at least moderate intensity, depending on the pain they are undergoing. People with RMD should be advised that exercise is safe and that it is never too late to start exercising. Exercise can be performed in different settings alone or in group. In group, they have seen it more because the encouragement for an entire uh, group is what adds to the uh, sustenance for long term of these exercises. People with osteoarthritis and axial spondyloarthritis should be especially encouraged to exercise as is particularly beneficial for disease related outcomes. They have entire uh, listing for diet, exercise, and lifestyle modification. So what are the time period recommendations given in the above uh, recommendations? 
people with rmd should aim for at least moderate intensity aerobic exercise that is 64 to 76% of maximal heart rate for at least 150 minutes per week and strengthening exercises should be 50% to 69% of an individual's once repetition maximum effort at least for twice a week so as we say this is not just physiological in the sense biochemical and diet therapy or exercise therapy it's more of mind and psychology also so yoga as we all know plays a very important role in disease control and reversal of many lifestyle related diseases so what uh, a paper i found with yoga and high uric acid intervention so yogic intervention decreases the uric acid levels however those who have very high levels of blood uric acid then normal could not get its normal level after practice so those who have slight raised uric acid level then normal found their normal blood uric acid after this intervention different decreases in the level of uric acid may also be due to different variety or uh, variedness of the dietary restrictions patient is following but with diet as well as this yogic uh, prolonged yogic exercise duration they said may give the better result so this is the study a study on the effect of yogic interventions of blood uric acid levels in the gout patients so what is the take home message obesity and weight management through lifestyle modica- modification is very important we as dietitians need to counsel in entire uh, bird view not just the uh, one single component of any disease so low purine low fructose fiber rich and antioxidant rich with anti inflammatory diet is what will help them moderate intensity aerobic and resistant training prolonged yogic practices will help to alleviate symptom and better management stress management programs especially through yoga will help them for better outcomes and lifestyle management because if person comes out of stress most of his biochemical chemistry and psychological uh, problems will be solved thank you very much for patience listening the uh, participation also proves that yes we all need to understand how to practice dietetics we are missing that gap of case based presentation counseling mnts and the molecular mechanism behind the scene and we go by blanket therapy saying that you should not eat this you should eat this so today i think the world of dietetics is not about don'ts and do's the world of dietetics is about smart eating manipulating and the nutrition and personalized health yes so uh, as we said uh, mentioned by nazneen that we will pick up people we would pick up our fraternity whoever is interested and do come out friends because it's very nice that you would get a platform where you can get benching by salomi ma'am we will discuss about the case you may be wrong at certain point you're not questioning your approach it is important that you come out you make a presentation where you'll also learn while you're talking about it and this and this will go on and on with this kind of an approach we have so the present today's case was more about diabetes and thyroid and we want what you want us to discuss next month also while you're talking to me i think your ideas is what we are incorporating so we've started a series of diabetes we're making it case based so today if somebody says we want to learn thyroid so please please um, tell us that what you want to uh, understand next month we already had a half an hour case presentation discussion now we'll quickly recap some mnt some molecular mechanism and look at it case based and this is the same case friends you would like to present i have not detailed out case discussion like uh, we had it uh, by madhvi that uh, the calc- calories proteins fat because we thought we'll take the same case and make it into a detailed presentation by one of you discussing what we have today behind the scene the thyroid mechanism so we're looking forward for you to write down what you have thought about this case everyone should start putting their own thoughts in the paper and one of you can present it so the case for thyroid and diabetes goes very simple uh, i wanted to make it female i'm sorry for that it's a 30 year old female because females are more prone to hypothyroidism uh sorry i think this is the wrong presentation this is a, sorry 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 this is the case sorry it was the previous one the case which madhvi presented very sorry for that so this case is about a 35 year old female you can see she's 5 feet 2 inches the bmi goes as 33.29 Madhvi, this time I did make it a point to write height and weight because I also learned from your uh, presentations that what needs to be given, and I will try to do the best while I present because the same case one of you will present next week. 
So yes, she was detected with hypothyroidism since an year. So at 34 age, she was um, hypothyroidic. She was on, she's on medications of thyroxine and her lipids, her vitamin D is very, very low. They are, hey, lipids, she's dyslipidemic and D3 is low. B12 looks normal. She is into pre-diabetic at this stage. Her postprandial is 240. Her um, uh, fasting is 115. And her symptoms, apart from hypothyroidism and weight, is the fatigue, the energy imbalance, fatigue, lethargy, of course, hair loss and constipation. And we just go a few a small recap and whatever you need to understand more, you can add on in your presentation, as ma'am said, that you can always assume few areas which have not been given in the case. So we have said that she's an IT person, but definitely she does an exercise after she was detected with thyroid after a year. So some alertness on weight management is improved because any kind of disease assumption or feeling fear of the disease, you try to discipline yourself. So that was the case. She was not an exercise person. But she started doing three years of walking, three days of, three days of yoga. Madhuri, Madhuri very beautifully told about what yoga contributes to your diabetic health. And she recently had a weight gain again after detection of thyroid in six months, three to five kgs. Regular constipation. And today she's pre-diabetic to diabetic hypothyroidism. No drugs for diabetic management. Doctor says lose weight, work on your diet. Come back to us. She's only on hypothyroidic medicine. She comes to us saying that I want to work on my health. She's a typical eater where we have given her a big vegetarian diet. She's a vegetarian person. So it's a typical dietary call for her with a morning tea, breakfast with a fruit, tea, again, a two chapati, sabji and dal. Portions are not more. The calories goes to 1500 to 1800. So there's a true fruit. There are, there's discipline. There's mindfulness. There's control. She's eating normal khana, 1500 to 1800. There's no emotional eating. There's no stress eating. It is just the weight management, the thyroid management, and the pre-diabetes status, which is stressing her. So with this case, this case-based ap approach will start looking at what can we be done to overall work on case management. Friends, we have so many of us looking at thyroid as a simple hypothyroidism and uh, uh, um, a wide guide to goitrogens, work on weight management, and you start looking at calcium and D3. So this is how you typically build up a case in your mind when you and, uh, when you have this case. I'm sure all of you now at this time, while I'm speaking, have thought about it. And you already made up your mind, we need to uh, work on our dyslipidemia and we need to work on uh, her um, uh, supplementations if she is. And then weight management should take care of it. Of course, this is what is being prioritized in MNT. But friends, what's important is we never think about why a dyslipidemia, why a constipation. Where is she lacking? We said she exercises. We said she's following a mindful eating. Is it a byproduct of any illness? Is it an underlying cause, etiology of any kind of a harm on the limb balance? So let, let's get into the root of any disease when you have encountered. And this is our goal, where whenever we have a case in front of you, like uric acid, we went in molecular mechanism. Thyroid also will try to understand. Most of the thyroid is, is not difficult to understand. We know that why hypo, why hyper. But today, I, me and ma'am thought that we should now give you an approach of underlying disease management and then approach towards MNTs. Because just giving a calorie pro macros and micros may not serve the answer because you won't be addressing the root cause and would not be correcting it otherwise. Because we all know food is looked up as a wonderful therapy for healing and recovery apart from disease management. So what is thyroid or what has thyroid hypothyroidism? We all know that it's a small gland in your uh, thoracic area. And we know the who rules thyroid is your pituitary gland, which has thyroid stimulating hormone. And thyroid has two hormones with it, T3 and T4. These two hormones, especially T3 hormone, T4 hormone gets converted into T3. And T3 is into your system to help you to work on energy management, metabolism. But this, the approach is the TRH, the hypothalamus, this beautiful mechanism of negative and positive feedback in your body. Your body senses, I'll give you a very small example so that you understand. If, you're, if a mother, a lactating mother is sensing a child who's crying and she knows that the child is hungry, the hypothalamus senses that the sympathetic system of your hypothalamus tries telling you that the child is hungry. It tries to release the 
it tries to give the uh, sub, uh, the the uh, effort on to pituitary gland to ask the pituitary gland to release the oxytocin um, hormone and this is how the negative positive feedback helps you to work on thai on any kind of hormonal balance with the help of hypothalamus and pituitary so is this thyroid thyroid releasing hormone sensitizes the requirement the quantitative requirement of the body for a particular body of because it is body is so complex you may be exercise you may be sportsman you may be a lactating mother you may be a middle age you may be menopausing there's so many other air things going on in your body so require depending upon your energy metabolism your bmr your the thyroid releasing hormone sensitizes thyroid stimulating stimulating hormone which depends on t3 t4 in your blood and then you get into this uh normal thyroid mechanism if you get into a hypothyroidism hypothyroid hyperthyroidism diagnosis what is the major challenge let's understand a very recap i'm we not endocrinologists we're not getting into the detailed system but from dietetic point of view when you get a patient of hypothyroidism what should you concentrate so you have to start looking at what is the reason for a hypothyroidism primary or secondary primary thyroid malfunction then it must be some negative feedback on pituitary tsh secretion so low levels of thyroid hormone and very high levels of tsh and trh primary thyroid so doctor said to correct the overall management of thyroid through the normal medications and some kind of counseling or managing her overall uh, status of her health through the hormonal checkups then the secondary causes which we generally ha- highlight is low level of tsh and th and high levels of trh because there is a lack of negative feedback to hypothalamus to release trh by tsh and th and hypothalamus malfunction is decreased trh where you de- if the trh is not working you have low levels of tsh at th and trh this does looks complex but i'll make it very simple to understand very important is my thyroid level is not normal hyper hypo whatever it is why is it not not, not normal check the tsh because if there is a pituitary gland dysfunction so your tsh secretion decreases simple thoughts so okay with the tsh there is less of t3 t4 so it's a feedback mechanism so we know that when tsh decreases and t3 t4 also decreases and when the t3 t4 decreases you have so many areas of your health which is being attacked vasodilation metabolism lipids lipoprotein lipase activity because a very important enzyme which converts your carbohydrates into your lipids lipoprotein lipase so your vldl ldl management so if your bmr is decreased you know that from skin health hair insulin everything goes for a toss and you also have a very decreased gi motility that's also one of the by product of your decreased metabolism because of hypothyroidism so we all know that when the body is attacked with some kind of a pituitary dysfunction the target organ is metabolism so it may it may be autoimmune it may be secondary or it may be primary the reasons can be any if it's autoimmune it is the same impact what we're trying to highlight that your your vascular health your metabolic health your lipid health all this goes for, and the gut health goes for a toss so you the, the the because the thyroid is very important for your heart rate mechanism so another area you may have a thyroiditis where you may have this thyroid because of n number of challenges inflammation due to drugs iodine deficiency congenital etc but the target organs can be neurology vascular in fact if you do not know the mechanism you may have a challenge with your infertility neurologic symptoms and muscle cramps i would invite salomi ma'am to give some areas which i must have missed out while talking about pathogenesis ma'am would you like to contribute something else which i missed out in this pathogenesis i don't think you missed out uh, anything uh, only thing okay, is uh, further when we go how do we pick up uh, the endocrinology sites about the cause of the thyroid disease through different uh, uh, blood test 
so those parameters so we will try to work, yes. as a nutritionist we will uh, have to look into and interpret so when you are Perfect. seeing the hormone we will i will add <clears throat> correct so uh, we heard about the impact of hypothyroidism hyperthyroidism thyroid dysfunction friends on the body at the various areas so you now know the constipation can be because of thyroid the dyslipidemia can be because of that that's pathogenesis which needs to be very clear in your mind and we all know t3 t4 is very importantly that t3 t4 is produced by thyroid gland now main hormone produced by thyroid gland is t4 it is formed by two dids did is di iodotyrosine so you know that tyrosine is involved as an amino acid you know that a micronutrient ultra micronutrient iodine is involved so majorly t4 is being produced by our thyroid the job of t4 is to convert into t3 and this t3 is formed in your liver they are single did they are formed from did they are more potent than t4 actual job of thyroid is done by t3 t4 is secreted gets converted into t3 and hence you will notice that you will have a blood investigation of total t3 in the blood and free t4 either way because when the endocrinologists want to understand the pathophysiology much better why the thyroid dysfunction is happening so it can be thyroiditis thyroid is simple it is swelling of thyroid gland it can be autoimmune we'll talk about it going ahead it's called hashimotos and most of you must be known about it it's not autoimmune it can be postpartum thyroiditis it can be iron deficiency it can be non function of the thyroid gland at a congenital level so i think each one of us as a nutritionist or dietitian should know the behind the scene etiology and pathophysiology otherwise if it is inflammation we can handle it with anti inflammatory if it is some kind of a vascular like this case has constipation this case has lipidemia but we know the basic reason is thyroid management so you look at tsh you talk to your endocrinologist so there has to be a give and take of discussions about the the nature of the disease and what best you can do to the diet with the help of and knowing the underlying disease so the other is we all know graves disease this is also called as toxic goiter this is too much is hyperthyroidism autoimmune but hyperthyroidism nodules are there you find many a times find thyroid thyroidectomy where the nodules disrupt the function of thyroid and your patient can come to you with, with thyroidectomy but with with normal thyroid levels so that she is taking drugs to work on normal thyroid and again a thyroiditis inflammation causes like tonsillitis it can be gastritis so very acute phase of infection where we do not know but there is an inflammation and many at times excessive iodine medications etc we'll talk about in detail so we are now looking at thyroid and diabetes this patient is a classic way of looking at she has one year hypothyroidism now she's detected with your um, um diabetes so if it is autoimmune we know that at autoimmune level type 1 diabetes can trigger type 2 diabetes is a by product of metabolic stress so there is a stress in the body we need to understand yes the primary job of dietitian in this case is discipline lifestyle time management etc so going back again to thyroid we know now that patient comes to with hypothyroidism she comes to with diabetes she comes to with dyslipidemia she comes to with constipation and now we know the job of thyroid is metabolism heart rate body temperature gut motility very important brain function because of iodine muscle function controlling the way of muscle function skin and bone maintenance is very very important function of thyroid and hence to learn more we talk about Understand the thyroid test. So, patient comes to us showing the thyroid report, saying that this is my thyroid level. So, rightly you said that uh, TSH, T3, T4, free three, three, T3, free T4. Yeah, we so can hear. That's what I'm saying. The thyroid levels are. Uh, ma'am, do you want to order for some time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm there. Yes, ma'am. So I. Uh, no, we can hear her. Yeah. I think so. She, 
so to look at these levels and we must know the normal levels of t3 t4 and tsh and that's how we will know what is the normal level what is the higher level and what is the problem in that particular patient then there is a often we see thyroid antibody test or a tpo antibody test is done where it is said nine international these are international units per ml so tpo is actually it is thyroid peroxidase it's an enzyme okay so it's an enzyme and which is to be uh, tested and this enzyme is uh, uh, acts on the uh, thyroid releasing uh, or tsh so the thyroid hormone is not released so if you have less than 9 uh, international unit tpo so these are the antibodies which are not for us for the endocrinologists to rule out the cause of thyroid disease so that's why these uh, uh, antibodies are done there is another one is <clears throat> thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin antibody that is called tsi so or it is known it is also tsi is 1.75 international unit so this levels are also there or may not be there mainly sometimes we see only tpo antibodies and that will tell us to identify what it is sometimes to rule out the uh, subclinical thyroid disease or a subclinical hypothyroid for the patient with uh, diabetes or a female with diabetes and postmenopausal we often see this sub uh, uh, subclinical hypothyroid and we do not uh, know or the endocrinologist is not able to uh, interpret or know what is the cause and that's why they will ask for these results so if it is abnormal levels then you will know this is uh, postmenopausal uh, uh, thyroid case and as rightly said is this is a gland, gland endocrine gland and always one endocrine abnormality leads to and triggers to an another endocrine abnormality that is how we connecting type 1 dm type 2 dm and uh, thyroid disorders together and that's why we are learning your hypothyroid and th uh, thyroid uh, uh, disorders today in this particular case so this is there then the tig which she was the, uh, explaining this again is the uh, hormone stimulating it's an antigen which is tested which also tells the endocrinologist what is the uh, problem what is the cause of it treatment does not change sometimes because treatment is based on what is your symptom and what is your other clinical condition and Uh, your main T3 T4 levels so thyroxine is actually levothyroxine is main line of treatment for antibodies positive or negative we are not treating the, the endocrinologist does not treat but it is only to rule out the uh, cause of the thyroid you can go yeah, ahead and go yeah makes sense ma'am yes ma'am yes so somewhere we are trying to understand that if a dietitian gets a prescription you have to underline cause of disease Hashimoto's thyroid, simple hypothyroidism, inflammatory hypothyroidism, or Graves' disease. You have to start looking at it that way. In this case, I have not put what kind of thyroid it is. We will simply take it as hypothyroidism. It is not mentioned autoimmune. The treatment changes, but it is for us understanding. that if it is hashimoto stress thyroidism we need to address the autoimmune like what ma'am says the thyroid antibodies many a times underlying etiology is not understood till your tsh becomes normal to so thyroid antibodies tpo test most of the time it is done because it is work at your trh level so these are antibodies we know that antibodies are the cells which attack your own cells when in in case of infection now here antibodies attack its own cells in the gland so it may be at a thyroid level it may be at a pituitary level or it may be at a hypothalamus level pituitary level or thyroid level accordingly the reaction of the body to produce that thyroid level decreases it take it may take some time to manifest it in tsh so tpo will help us to work on it so many a times if you feel your patient is symptomatic of thyroid you can always ask your patients to go for a tpo test with the help of endocrinology uh, endocrinologist or your doctor's understanding that i suspect some thyroid level of that because metabolism is very much to do with diet and lifestyle we have to work on energy metabolism to prove that my calorie management has to work on our weight management 
So many a times TPO, a dietitian can talk to the doctor and think about it that way that is there an underlying cause of any impaired metabolism. Now we talked th about treatment. Treatment is T4 because T3 converts into T3. T4 is generally levothyroxine taken on empty stomach. And most of the time, if it is detected iodine deficiency, we treat with iodine. So friends, to talk about nutrition management, we'll quickly take a recap. Maybe we can put more in, um, inputs on it next time when we have someone presenting case to us because it's already time for us to, we'll, we need to talk about some uh, discussion on this topic also. So nutrition ma management, we look at iodine as an integral part of the therapy. We all know that iodine, excessive iodine, um, can be generally body does not retain iodine you gen, body excretes out excess iodine taken to the food so see to it that your dietary pattern has adequate amount of iodized salt obesity factors dietary patterns many a times the studies have given references after this that after this slide that gluten-free diet casein uh, gluten-free diet does support su uh, subclinical hypothyroidism there is a research milk in pathogenesis has not been established in thyroid management. Many a times, anemia also can contribute to thyroid risk diseases. Selenium is an important micronutrient with uh, important role is thyroid functions. Because if you look at the metabolism of selenium, selenoproteins, which include the iodothyroxine selenodiodinases D1 and D3, the conversion of T4, in simple words, conversion of T4 to T3, you need selenium. It's absolutely ultra-trace elements. You don't need to push more of it through supplementation. You should look at a balanced diet to work on selenium. Requirement of selenium is very less and supplementation can give toxicity. There is also an evidence for other nutrients, potassium, iodine, mag mag magnesium, zinc, iron, vitamin A, C, D, B and definitely a role of white regions. Small understanding for every dietitian here. Thyroid medication should be always taken on empty stomach. Why? Because meals can delay the absorption of levothyroxine, especially if you have a high fiber meal, high calcium meal, all this definitely delays the impact of absorption of thyroid T4. So both carbonate and iron supplements can, calcium carbonate and iron supplements can reduce the impact of levothyroxine and reduces effectiveness absorption. So when you are looking at calcium prescription, friends, what I want you to understand that do not go it with the thyroid supplementation. They should come at least eight to nine hours after your, because the first thing in the morning is thyroid. Calcium people just sab goli eki bar le lete. So I think a dietitian should understand the nutrient drug drug interaction, drug nutrient 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 interaction, where she knows that okay thyroid medications cannot come with calcium carbonate and iron supplementation because what we're looking in thyroid medication is to improve the absorption and because we're giving T4, the T4 converts into T3. So the conversion from T4 to T3, your body only has to do it. To make it more effective, you have to see that I make an environment in my body much better. So this is our test. Walnuts, soybean, uh, all these impact your thyroid functions. So don't have walnuts immediately after having your thyroid uh, medications. Iron supplements, calcium supplements, antacids, ulcer medications like sucralfate. Many of you take 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 for anti acid since statins. So all this definitely have an impact on thyroid medications. If you take these are some references which I just quoted about selenium and other areas. So friends, it's a simple way of looking at it. You have to look at adequate proteins, not high proteins. Normal, like in beautifully, Madhavi has mentioned about the protein in your uh, uric acid. Selenium in your diet, some selenium sources pick up some selenium. Zinc is a very important met, uh, nutrient in thyroid because at a cellular level, we know that zinc is a immunonutrient now. We are looking at cellular impact of thyroid hormone on, because thyroid works on all areas of your body. Vascular, neuro, muscles, everywhere. So zinc definitely helps you to have a better because your body has to use that T3, T4. It has to convert from T4 to T3. So D, zinc, C, E. All this is important. Definitely, uncooked foods have a lot of goitrogens, soybean we know, and gluten. Because why are these avoided? Maybe we're not about, thought about it. They are avoided for a better absorption of thyroid, which we are giving it through the supplementation or which we need to ourselves at the end to improve. We've already spoken about iodine. So now 
we leave this case to the participants, audience here, who would like to put more light in the detailed calculations. Things which have not been given can be assumed. We look forward for this case, taking this case ahead next week and a topic along with this case so that we sensitize how to manage this case. Ma'am, over to you if you have to make any comments. Thank you very much, Geeta, for that very lucid presentation and very clear and precise explanation at molecular levels and uh, at the therapeutic level. And I think we are now clear about how to solve a case with or without diabetes or with hypothyroid. So as the treatment remains in all types of thyroid, primary, secondary, levothyroxine, that is what we need to look into. And she has rightly said, uh, one endocrinologist I know, she will get up and go to the dietitian and say, why do you have to give nuts in the morning when I have given thyroid tablet in the morning? So this is... Uh, you don't forget, and I think today's dietitians have habit of giving starting day, uh, day with fruit and nuts. Especially when you are having thyroid medications, you are not giving any nuts, you are not giving any milk paste. That's why we say not even milk tea. So that's why the calcium goes up with dinner and all other supplementation should go at least 8 to 10 hours after the thyroid supplementation. So change, look at the drugs prescribed by the endocrinologist and then space it with your meals accordingly. So that is also his jo job of a nutritionist and a dietitian. So that's what you need to look into. Metabolism you need to, here is a person with a low BMR and a slow metabolism. So how do you increase the metabolism? How do you space your meals? How do you space your macro and micronutrients? As she's rightly said about selenium and zinc, we don't need to add supplements, but the foods rich in selenium and zinc and these, the dietary factors which Dr. Geeta spoke are disease specific nutrients, which we need to look into. Also, we need to look into the drug nutrient and nutrient nutrient reactions when we are looking as uh, MNT per se.